With the armistice, the war in Europe was over, but at home there was still no peace. In the winter of 1919, unemployment and a cut in wages caused the Seattle shipyard workers to strike. They called on all workers to do the same, to create a general strike, a massive stop work movement that would shut the city down. It was an unprecedented move, forbidden by every union charter and condemned by the American Federation of Labor. As the deadline for the strike drew near, panic sent people into the stores to hoard food and supplies. The fear that Seattle would erupt with riots induced some citizens to be deputized. The National Guard was mobilized, ready to quell the impending revolution. And across the country, editorials warned, the Bolshevik beast has come out into the open, and it is only a step from Seattle to Petrograd. From her office in the Seattle Union Record, the city's only labor-owned paper, Anna Louise Strong issued her own call to arms. We are undertaking the most tremendous move ever made by labor in this country, a move that will lead no one knows where. We do not need hysteria. We do not need fear. We need the iron march of labor, for labor will feed the people care for the babies and the sick, and preserve order. Not the withdrawal of labor power, but the power of the workers to manage will win this strike. Her, her editorial I mean, seems to be sums up the spirit of the strike. They, did, they didn't know what they were doing, is the way I would interpret this, or where they were going. But it, it sounds ominous, it's got a kind of, kind of romantic touch to it, and it captivates people even now, and their eyes get big when they think about that. It was the first general strike in U.S. history. The wealthy, fearing revolution, fled to hotels in Portland. The middle class, fearing violence, stayed locked in their homes. Seattle functioned as a worker-run city, inspiring Strong to write, If by revolution is meant violent, forcible taking of property, killing of men, surely none of our workers dreamed of such action. But if you mean that a great change is coming over the face of the earth, which will transform our methods of carrying out industry, then we do believe in such a great change, and our general strike was one step towards it. After only three days, the strike collapsed. But for Anna Louise Strong, it was not the end, but the beginning. Anna Louise Strong, by this editorial, no one knows where, and the subsequent Seattle General Strike made a name for herself as a radical calling for revolution. It struck fear in the hearts of a number of people, but it also aroused a great deal of hope among radical groups, both in this country and around the world. She therefore never lost this one incident from her own background, and she was proud of it. She would always say to herself in coming years, if she was ever tired or felt she was lo losing her drive, Ah, to be back to this Seattle General Strike days when, when that was really the most important thing that was going on in the world.